Volkswagen, Porsche, BMW, Volvo and DAF are famous names in the European automotive industry. In order to keep production and distribution up to speed, they use an extensive network of transport companies. A team of trade union researchers from the FNV investigated the automotive industry supply chain. They discovered that the transport sector is largely based on a toxic business model. To reduce wage costs as much as possible, drivers from Eastern Europe and even outside the European Union are used on a huge scale. The result? Social and economic crimes and drivers who fall victim to unfair competition, exploitation and degrading practices. The automotive manufacturers close their eyes to reality to benefit from cheap labor. Over the past few months, the investigator spoke with many drivers of different nationalities throughout Europe. They mapped the supply chain and documented abuses. This is the shocking story of their findings. You drive here be behind the steering wheel. Yes. Here you sleep. Yes. Here you cook. Here you have your tools to put the truck safe. These big companies are asking for cheap transport. You can have cheap transport only if you are cheating the system. Only thing where you can cheat the system is the taxes and the salary from the driver. What we see, can we qualify as social economic criminal. This is not something that the rules are unclear or the interpretation of the law. No, these are wills and wills, constructions that are put in place to keep workers out of the street, to avoid competition, with the result that the safety of the vehicle is in danger. Silviu transports car parts for Volvo. He has a Romanian contract and works for the American company XPO, but he always drives between Spain and Belgium. He works in periods of three months during which he permanently lives in his truck. He has little social contact and misses his family. I have to work like three months in a row to stay three months in this truck, to sleep here and do everything here. To stay in a small square Every minute and every day, every night, to work here and sleep here is not okay. To see your brothers or your sons two or three weeks at three months of work, your children are looking to you like to a stranger. You're losing almost any happy moment of their life. What is going on? The automotive industry uses drivers who are employed in the East but work in the West. Drivers receive Eastern European contracts with Eastern European wages. However, they only work in Western Europe. The drivers are brought to Western Europe by minivan or plane to work for Western automotive companies. We give set a carousel up, where in bijvoorbeeld werknemers uit Roemenië in Polen op de loonlijst geplaatst worden. Vervolgens. En rijden die mensen nooit meer in dat land, maar rijden gewoon vol continu in Nederland, België, Duitsland, Frankrijk, Scandinavië. Maar het is evident dat al die bedrijven alleen maar gevestigd zijn in die landen om werknemers hun rechten af te nemen. Ja, uh, kort gezegd, een uh, race to the bottom. Haulage company De Roy in the Netherlands works for DAF trucks, Volvo, Renault, Mercedes and Iveco. It calls itself market leader in truck and tractor transport with 450 of its own trucks. But those hundreds of trucks are mostly driven by workers from Romania, the Ukraine and Poland, hired with a Polish contract. We see that, for example, a chauffeur from Romania has a Polish job contract. In the case of De Roy, there is a company in Warsaw. Now, we're going to look at if the company in Poland actually exists. Als je dan uh, de werkelijkheid van zo'n bedrijf controleert, hè, dan, dan zie je dat, het, dat iemand de deur open doet en die zegt dit is een virtual office. 
daadwerkelijk werken daar 500 mensen. Daar horen activiteiten te zijn. Er worden miljoenen euro's aan omzet gegenereerd in zo'n bedrijf. En het is gewoon een postbusbedrijf. The Romanian driver Doru signed an employment contract in the Netherlands. But in the name of De Roy's Polish branch. However, he never drives in Poland. This is the contract. This is in Poland. Ik heb zijn loonberekeningen gemaakt en dan kom je erachter dat hij in iets meer dan twee jaar tijd recht had op 80.000 euro aan loon. En hij heeft in werkelijkheid maar 20.000 euro gekregen. Heel your hourly wage is 10 slotty. It's 2 euro's. And here it's 10 euro's. These drivers work permanently in Western Europe and should receive Western wages. But of course, that doesn't happen. The drivers receive falsified documents to show should there be a control. Those documents mention salaries that are many times higher than what they actually receive. The same practices can be seen at Ewell's Cargo Care. They employ about a thousand drivers, but only 14 of them officially work in the Netherlands. The remaining 986 drivers are on the payroll in Eastern Europe. The Czech driver Alice shows documents proving that Ewells also juggles wage documents. Ja, so, we zijn hier twee keer in plaats. Maar is dat echt? Is dat realiteit? Dat is document? Nee. nee. Zeker niet. De realiteit is in de Tsjechische minimale loon. Dat is ja. niet de realiteit. En dat document is vals dan? Zeker. Hast du ook nog voor andere landen? Nee, ik ook. Dit is de Österreich en dat is alles. Zo so hier staat, du kriegst 501 euro die woche. Ja, 500 stimmt, maar niet per woche. Ook fout, je dat ook pro monat. Ja. Dit is een Romeinian contract. Ik heb een Romeinian wage, like almost 500 euro per maand. Het systeem let de de employers to do everything they want with the salaries, to pay uh, qualified workers with, uh, un uh, with wages of unqualified workers. To work with the minimum of wage all the life, you're gonna have a, a very, very small pension. So this is what I'm trying to, to avoid. This guy is, is doing everything in the, avoid the, the taxes. I feel... Uh, are respected because it's it's unfair to be paid like this. The payment of social premiums and taxes are a foundation of society. There are European regulations to ensure fair and effective insurance for cross-border workers. In the supply chain of the automotive industry, we see that shopping social security has become a revenue model. Drivers are socially insured in a member state where they've never been. Do you pay any social security in Europe? Do you know it? If if the company social security? Are you kidding me? I don't have even an ENN. I should get that one first. An ENN? Then what is an ENN? Is a social security number. Here's my insurance. I buy myself and the doctor 62 euro from the salary. So you bought your own insurance? Yes, because it's tourist insurance. It's not. It's for travel, not for I, work. Are you not insured for work then, via the company? I am in Moldova only. Drivers are not only underpaid and poorly insured; they're also regularly dispatched with worn-out trucks. Doru shows the bad shape his truck is in. Can you show it? I I have had broken chassis, broken uh, uh, rams. You feel not safe in driving this truck. A normal driver don't have to be safe in this kind of track. The chassis is cracked in various places and the electrics are exposed to the elements. He worries not only about his own safety, but that of the other road users. The chauffeurs in this industry are riding the bomben, 
geïsoleerd van alles en iedereen, zijn ze aan het driving en surviving en niet met hun werk bezig. Drivers are forced to violate driving and resting times and to commit fraud with their tachographs. The drivers are exhausted simply because they cannot rest sufficiently. And when they can finally take their rest, they have to sleep in their cabins. Driver Marin is from Moldova. He confirms that this fraud is commonplace. La lucru de la început mi-a mi spus că o să lucru este 3 luni. Muncești și o lună acasă. Unde stai efectiv astea 3 luni când ești la lucru? În mașină. În difracta auto. În mașină, toate 3 luni le stai în mașină. Ah. Da, stau la o, o la o parcare unde nu sunt toate comoditățile, da? La o parcare unde se află la 85 de km de la companie. Și compania nu vrea să mă tragă la, la garaj fiindcă nu vrea să achite supra, supra costuri pentru motorină. Pauza de 45 de ore este pur și simplu interzisă în cabină. Ce zice firma despre chestia asta? Da, este interzisă și compania știe de această chestie că e interzisă pauza ca șoferul să o facă în cabină, dar ei ne impun, să zicem așa, să scoatem cartela din tachograf, fiindcă au spus ei că penalitatea este mai mică dacă cartela este scoasă, chiar dacă te verifică poliția. Dar dacă nu o scoți, cartela din tachograf la pauză de 45 de ore, iar îți scoate din salariu bani. Undeva 25-30 de euro. Fiindcă nu e clar nici până ziua de azi. Când îți dau mai mult, când îți taie, când... Marin works for a subcontractor of Ewell's Cargo Care. He and his colleagues do haulage for manufacturers such as Jaguar, BMW, Opel and Vauxhall. Hungarian company Wabras operates in the West. They like to create a sunny image, but trucks are penalized during police controls for breaking driving and resting time on a structural basis. They work for Vauxhall, Opel, DAF and others. In fact, the biggest company in Europe is cut up into subcontractors who are often based in small Hungarian tax haven villages without economic activities. The car manufacturers all have ambitious sustainability standards, which ensure that there is no malpractice in their supply chain. But what's happening on Europe's roads doesn't match the image that the constructors want to sketch. To date, all intentions and statements of the automotive sector have not yet reached the truckers' cabins. A driver shows the sanitary facilities that the Deroy company provides for its drivers. Astea sunt condițiile la derui, care se laudă. V-am lăsat o zi bună la toată lumea. Voor de automobielindustrie is transport gewoonweg een grondstof. Zonder transport geen fabriek die meer draait. En de verantwoordelijkheid is op papier zo ver weg georganiseerd dat een autofabrikant heel makkelijk de andere kant op kijkt van we weten dit niet, maar in tussentijd zit de chauffeur uitgebuit in zijn cabine. Working conditions are degrading, wages are under pressure, decent employers lose market share, and the front runners in exploiting drivers get away with impunity. This investigation shows that drivers and their trade unions must be involved in putting the sustainability standards of the European car industry into practice. Drivers know what sustainability should look like. Employ drivers where they actually work and treat them with dignity because it is the drivers that keep the automotive industry going.